Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. And in this video, this weekly Svelte, we're gonna be diving into creating a loading, well, it's kind of like a universal loading animation or a loading image for Svelte Kit. And I wanna kind of illustrate this really quickly because this is kind of the thing that people will hit when they're first starting to use a data from an, um, if having data available from the loaders. Because let's go ahead and, and I have a, a temporary little situation here where this is just a really basic repo and I'll have this available to uh, for you to fork and to check out when I'm done. I'll post the link in the description. But we have here is a Svelte Kit site. I'm running this on Stack Blitz and you can see it's just two different routes, home and about, home and about. So this is the home page. This is the about page. I wrote a quick little sleep function here and I wanted to show you sometimes what we have here in Svelte Kit is we need to load data. So we turn our loader function into an async function and then we go off and we hit an API. We await, hit an API. Now I'm going to sleep for let's say two seconds here. And this sleep function is going to essentially just to simulate a request that took two seconds to run. It's a long request. But it's important that you do see this because this is the type of thing that can happen when you're working with real data. Obviously, you're not typically coding in a sleep function in your load to make your site slower on purpose. But you know, I want to be able this to show this in a, a replicatable way. Okay, so we have our home and about page, and we go home, and then we go about. Actually, let me hit a refresh because it didn't look like it took the refresh. Now I'm going to click the about in three, two, one. Click one, two page change. So if you have a loader that takes a long time for whatever reason, the data that it's trying to get is slow here, then you're going to be sitting and waiting for this thing to load. And your users are going to be thinking that nothing happened. Notice how there's nothing going on here. Okay. You can't even, you can't tell, right? Nothing. So how do we quickly and easily tap into the Svelte kit system to realize if this site has been done loaded or not, because there's a lot of ways we could do this. You could have a, um, like a subscription inside of here and set it to be loading is true. And then set it loading to be false. That way they get the loader individually on here. You could do that manually, but let's say we wanted to have this automatic for every route on our site. Well, we could head into our source folder and I'm going to create a new Actually, let's create a new folder in here. Let's just use the lib folder. We can say lib and then inside of lib, I'm going to create a new file and this is going to be loading.ts. This could be JS if you wanted it to be as well. And loading.ts is going to be where we have our store. Now our store is going to be very basic. We're going to import writable from Svelte kit. So we're going to import writable from Svelte hyphen store. Okay, and then we're going to create an export const loading is equal to writable and the default value for this will be false. Okay, so here we have a very basic loading store and it's going to be set to false. Now let's go ahead and create a layout inside of our routes. The reason why we need a layout here is because we want this to be something that exists on every single page for our entire app. And if we wrap the about and index page and we have a layout at the root of our application, it will be doing exactly that. So we're going to say underscore layout. Actually, I'm sorry. It's double underscore 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 layout dot svelte. So we have our layout and you can see the page is now blank. So let's add a slot in here. So that way our page is no longer blank, nice and easy. And the next thing we want to do is add some JavaScript. Now this JavaScript will be not inside of the context module, but this is going to be available just in the standard JavaScript part of things. So we're going to say script and it can be very basic like this. If you want, you can do lang equals TS as well. I typically do myself and we'll say here we have a script and what we want to do is bring in the Svelte store called navigating. We're going to say import navigating from dollar sign app forward slash stores. Now navigating is a property that arrives to us in Svelte and you can see that it is an object. And the reason why the object object is listed here instead of a true false or anything is because navigating is a store in Svelte. So if we do a dollar sign in front of here, 
you'll see that when we are not navigating, it says null. And when we click about, it says object, object, and then null. So what that means is that if we're kind of looking at this navigating store, we can quickly and easily set our loading store to true or false based on the status, whether or not this is null or not. Now you might be wondering why the heck we would do that instead of just utilizing navigating itself. Well, I'll show you because it'll allow us to utilize the same loading store for when we want to manually set a loading store as well. So let's go ahead and import our loading loading from, and this is from, oh my gosh, typing. Okay. Dollar sign lib and then loading like this. And inside of our JavaScript here, we can say that now there's other approaches you could use to do this, but I think this is quick and simple. We can say dollar sign colon to have a reactive statement. Dollar sign loading is equal to exclamation point, exclamation point, dollar sign navigating. Now this double exclamation point, this is the inverse. The inverse of null is I believe going to be true. And then the um, inverse of object object is going to be false. And since that's kind of the opposite of what we want, we do another inverse of that. So this will take essentially what is a null and an object and turn it into a Boolean true or false that represents the exact same thing. So now let's actually say, okay, we want to be saying, are we loading or not? And you can see, now we're getting a false for not loading because we're utilizing the loading subscription. And then when we click home, you can see as we click the about, it takes a second and we'll click home. We click true and it says true now. Very cool. Now what's great about this is that we'll have access to this loading at all times. So at any given point in our application, we'll be able to do something like button set loading and we can say on click dollar sign loading is equal to true. And you'll be able to manually set this thing. So if we click this button, you can see it sets it to true. And then when we navigate, yeah, sure. It goes to false. So this will give us full control over this loading state, whether or not we want to be able to manually trigger it, or we also wanted to have it automatically triggered by the navigating state. Now from here, what we could do is create a component, a new file. We'll just call this loading.svelte and loading.svelte can just be a script. And again, I'm using stacklets here, so I don't have any of my shortcuts or anything like that. In case you're wondering why I'm not utilizing any of that fun stuff. We have our script lang ts. We're going to once again, want to import loading from dollar sign lib forward slash loading, loading like this. And now we can utilize this loading inside of this component by an if pound, if dollar sign loading, if we are loading, let's go ahead and show this loader component and we can just have this be a div and this div will get some style. What kind of style is this div going to get? Well, let's see, we can make this a position fixed. Now we'll give this a background of purple. We'll give this a border radius of let's say 10 pixels, and then we'll turn this thing into a box. So actually let's do it this way. We'll say, hyphen hyphen size is equal to 10 pixels. And then we can say var hyphen hyphen size. And then we can reuse that size over and again to say the height and width will be of the same size as the border radius, making the oops, width is what I want, making this thing a square. Okay. So, or a circle, I should say. Okay. So we have this is, is loading show this div, this div will have the following styles. So let's go ahead and add this to our main layout. We'll have our layout here. We can import, import loading from lib. And I know I, I'm realizing now that I have two files named loading. It's okay. Typically I would store this in its own folder. That's like state or something. Either way, you can just throw this component onto your page anywhere here. Let me get rid of this terminal. Okay. Check it out. If we set loading now, we should see the purple in here while it's loading. If we go to about, and then when we stop loading, the purple goes away about there it is. Now the 10 pixels is not really super ideal. Let's go ahead and set loading to true. So we can just have it up all the time. We can say this thing is going to be a hundred pixels more like it. It is going to be position fixed. So we can say in set, let's say 50% and actually let's do a calc of 50% minus 100 pixels. There we go. And I think we can do a top of zero and a left of zero. 
actually this should be calc sorry the calc is 50 percent minus 50 pixels um th there's another way you could do this you could do a nested calc inside of here and say hey give me the var of the size here we're getting into some nifty css territory we're, uh, give me the var of the size divided by two if we want this thing to be truly dynamic and now anytime we change the size of this it's always going to be in the center isn't that neat so actually let's take a little let's take a little detour here and talk about why css variables are so neat we're using the inset property to inset this in, in every single direction and to do so we're saying hey you know what we want the inset amount to be 50 percent of the browser width so that would put it right here in the center then we're going to subtract half of the width of this thing as in from here to here is half of the width. And likewise, we're gonna be doing that in every direction, which is pretty neat if you take a look at this. Again, this is, I love CSS variables. I, I'm sure there's easier ways to do this, but come on, this is pretty neat. Now, let's go ahead and add an animation to this as well, because it's a CSS variable. Let's go ahead and what we want to do to this thing is we want it to be, now the easiest way to have this move left to right is to do keyframes. So we can say at keyframes, and then we'll say move loader and move loader is going to have a from value and the from is going to be a transform translate 3d we always use 3d so that it implements the uh the graphics processor instead of just using your cpu and then we can say we're going to move you zero and then let's actually let's move it on the x dimension so well, let's just say we're going to move you 100 pixels uh, from one direction and then zero comma zero and then we're going to duplicate this line and have a two and we're going to say translate 3d and we're going to say negative 100 pixels nice and easy. And then we can attach these keyframes to our animation by using the animate. So we'll come up to our CSS and we'll say animation. And the name is going to be move loader. The duration will be one, uh, let's say two seconds, right? One, two, just trying to get it in my mind here. Um, the timing function will be, and how, how long do we want? How many iterations? We're going to say this is infinite and we're gonna say both for the fill mode. And let's see, it should go, eh, it's not going back and forth. What, what is the back and forth? I guess it's not, I guess it's not both. And I guess the, the keyboard we want is the animation direction, which is alternate, okay? And it should go back and forth now. There we go. So this is our, our interesting little loader. Maybe two seconds is a bit too much. Let's do it one second so it's a little bit more obvious. There we go. So this is kind of neat, right? I, I know we spent a long time on the CSS here, but the CSS is the fun part. So this is our little loader animation. If we go home, you can see nothing happened. If we click about one, two, there we go. Home, one, two, perfect. So now this will allow us to use a loading animation at any given point. We can trigger it manually ourselves, or we can trigger it via the navigation state. Okay, and one last thing on this layout before I give you your challenge. Okay, so we're gonna set this to false, set stop. Okay, or I should it say stop loading, stop loading, stop, stop loading. There we go, cool. Start loading, stop loading, start loading, stop loading. Home, about, there we go. Okay, so here's going to be your challenge. I'll issue several challenges in this video. I wanna see you fork this and I want to see a couple of things. I want to see this have some way of setting a loading message. So I wanna see kind of creative approaches. In fact, we do this on level up tutorials, so it's not like I, I don't have a good solution, but I wanna see what kind of solutions you come up with for if we wanted to have a message for this loading thing, saying just one second or something like that, how you could assign that to be dynamic and available to be manipulated. Now, also, another thing I would like is I would like for you to figure out a way to have a timeout for this thing. So let's say that on a page change that is only going to take a second, what we don't want is we don't want the loading screen to blip in there like that. So I want you to think about how you might approach that and and where you might approach that hint hint uh, as a way to perhaps say hey if loading is taking less than this amount of time don't show the loading thing that way you don't get a flash of a loader where needed okay 
And another one, I just kind of want to see what kind of interesting loading animations you can come up with CSS. This one we did quick and dirty is kind of fun, but again, not really that exciting. So let's see what kind of cool loading animations you can do. You get that? So we have the ability to have a loading message. We have another challenge, which could be the ability to have a timeout or some sort of a duration in which the loading animation will actually appear if it's been too long. And then also what kind of just creative things. So we have a technical challenge. We have another technical challenge and then a creative challenge. If you want to pick any of those up there, again, I'll make this available to share. Go ahead and fork this. Share your stack blitz in the show notes. Again, this isn't sponsored by stack blitz or anything, but this takes like two seconds. You just log in with your GitHub and edit in here. It's like kind of like the REPL, but you get access to the entirety of Svelte Kit. Pretty neat, huh? Okay, so give it a try and let me know what you think about this strategy. This is basically what we use on level up tutorials with some modifications to make this easier or to make it more intense, I should say. But let's go ahead and do a quick little reboot but let's do a quick little recap here. The way we set this up is that we used Svelte's own internal navigating store. We're checking to see if it's not null. If it is null, then this is going to be set to false. If it's not null, this will be set to true. We're then utilizing that same writable subscription on the component page to show or hide a div. And that's really just it. I mean, the, the main the main meat of this whole thing is this line right here, and then we had our store created somewhere else. Really pretty simple if you think about it, but a lot of potential, and it will work automatically whenever we're waiting on something to load. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Thank you so much for giving this weekly Svelte a view. If you want to head to leveluptutorials.com, that is leveluptutorials.com, like this, you can sign up, become a pro today and learn a ton about modern web development. We have so many courses here for you and new ones coming all the time. So if you want to give this a try at leveluptutorials.com, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.